Hello everyone, this is In Game Mars, we do another unboxing to break down another demo. This is Rebby Rebi. I hope I'm saying that name right, that's how it looks like it says it, Rebby Rebi. Uh, to start off, this is an Asian import version of the game, uh, because it comes with the soundtrack to the game. There was a small update, I mean really small, for 20, 20 megabytes. Apparently it fish, fixes a boss unlock mode, where sometimes it may not unlock, so... That kind of sounds important, but I mean, it, it probably is a rare occasion that this happens. <sighs> Moving on, there is going to be a limit run version of the game. It's currently not releasing anytime soon, by my understanding. That's the time of the making this video, of course. But I will leave links to limit run in case whenever they make it available, if you're curious. Again, this is the Asian version of the game. It comes with multiple languages uh, uh, support. Uh, if you want to go through the options, it will go, I'll go through all the uh, languages it supports. There is no voice acting in the game. This is all uh, text speak, so you have to do a lot of reading. So that's really nice that they have a lot of language support for the game. Rebby Red Buy is another one of those niche kind of like import, uh, import games that a lot of people don't know about. And I'm surprised it only got an import. It seemed like it would have been a nice little American release game. Rebby Red Buy is what is called a shoot 'em up or a shmup as some people call it. Shoot 'em ups are a game that's cluttered with bullets and rounds that cover the entire screen. I mean, like, your entire screen is nothing but gunfire going on. But this gives it a nice little twist where it's a, a, a 2D uh, platforming game, but it's actually an, also a mixture of RPG elements in there. So it kind of turns it on its head the typical shmup or shoot 'em ups games, where usually you're a ship and you're doing a side scrolling system over the head or side uh, 2D side scrolling. So, it's kind of a new genre in that field. It plays great. It feels pretty smooth. I really like the artsy, cutesy, light coloring effect. I literally love the chibi effect to the game. I actually really adore chibis. It's one of my, like, favorite little, like, uh, <coughs> how do you say, guilty pleasures. I like chibi. I like cute things. To be honest with you, I love cute things. I just, I don't know, it makes me smile. Like I said, it's an RPG too. You unlock extra equipment, it'll give you better gear and everything like that, and special abilities, as well as they got badges which will have all of its own little benefits and de benefits uh, to you, depending on what it is. And you can only equip so many of them unless you unlock more points in that field. So at the beginning, you can only equip maybe like one or two, but later on, you might be able to equip nine, fif 15 of them. But as well as, like I said, there's upgradable stuff. You will be able to upgrade your attack, your health, your magic. Unlock newer kinds of magics as well. And there's, like I said, abilities as well as life items you can use to restore your life and everything. It's your typical uh, RPG elements with the 2D sprite system of platforming. Uh, the overall story of the game involves you as Rebby the rabbit. You're basically your master's pet. And uh, something went wrong and you got teleported into some other world. And uh, now you're a human form, and there's apparently these crazy girls or something like that who are obsessed with bunnies. Where you're at, apparently bunnies are becoming somewhat of an extinct thing, <clears throat> and um, you're like one of the rare bunnies that are still alive. So I mean, you got a lot of crazy girls after you. <sighs> if this is not already abundantly, this is a very how do you say Yuri or very strongly female oriented, where there's no males in the game whatsoever. I haven't come across no male. Uh, the only really complaints I have with the game is actually nothing really much other than the anime. Uh, I don't really care for this anime theme they went with with some of the uh, dialogue cut moments where it brings up an anime character and a CG cutscene. Which, if you do not know what a CG cutscene is, it's basically a still image artist uh, design where it's usually just one simple image that appears with dialogue what's what's re what's represent represented in that image sometimes it can have some minor animation to that cg image but most time in most cases it's just a still image depicting whatever it's supposed to be showing uh, it gives it a very main anime where it's got very life-size females and stuff like that uh pictures and stuff instead of a chibi and I think this game, much like if you ever played World of Final Fantasy, the game is a lot better and enjoyable, always as chibi. And I think this game did the same uh, mistake too, where it's got a chibi effect, but also lifelike size anime characters. And I think the game should have just stuck with the chibi effect. I think the cutiness was one of its strongest suits, and it should have just rolled with that. The anime thing and the CG scenes didn't really feel 
necessary or it really actually felt out of place like you're including something that was really not really meant to be in the game but just put it in there for how do you say anime fans or people who are into those kinds of things or wanted to see a life-size version of Ribby and her bunny outfit in the end it just didn't feel necessary and story-wise again you're trying to follow the mystery of why you teleported this place trying to find your master what happened to her, trying to get back home, and that's basically a summarized story. You're trying to find other girls who have magical powers to help you teleport back to your home. That's pretty much the summarize of it. And the game even points and makes fun about something about the subject about that. Because like there's always females and then there's always uh you have to fight your per that person before they'll join you in your village and help you with your mission. And even pokes jokes and fun about that. And every boss you fight it depends on level and stuff like that. It can be quite a challenging. It's the bosses that are the bullet hell moments or the shmups or shoot 'em ups. How do you want to look at it? <laughs> there, some of them are pretty easy. Some of them riddle your screen with bullets. It become it can become quite troublesome at times, and you're going to get hit. And like I said, the game even encourages you try not to get hit. There's a multiplier in the top right side of the screen, kind of like a statistic board thing. And as you longer you go without being hit, you, the multiplier thing will go up. And as that thing goes up, you get more certain bonuses, like be able to do more damage, don't receive less damage, so on and so forth. It gets a little bonus. I had a hard time getting anything higher than E, because like, like I said, some of the bullet hells are really, really difficult. Not to the point where they're un like hard, hard, like really challenging, but to the point where you're going to get hit. <laughs> it's almost avoidable, unavoidable. And the game really encourages speedruns. It's got all these little features and functions that let you know about speedruns, how long you've been playing, and all that stuff. It's a game that's supposed to cater in all these kinds of fields, and it does a pretty good job with it. It's an interesting game to have in your collection. It's nowhere near a bad game. It's actually a pretty overlooked gem of a game, in my opinion. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I picked it up. The only complaint I have with it is the anime kind of approach theme system to it. Instead of embracing your cutesy chibi effect, I'm not a fan of the oh, whole Yuri and all that stuff, and like as I said, anime uh, size females and stuff. It, to me, it just didn't feel necessary. And as well as, like I said, it comes with a soundtrack to the game. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, I want to immediately say that I do not know if the Limit Run version is going to have the soundtrack with it or might have something else. I do not know what, I'm not in touch with them and all that stuff. I'm just providing you a link at the bottom in case they provide a, their version of their American version of the release of the game. So like always, I will leave links down in the description if you're interested to copy. I have to say, go for it. It's actually a pretty fun game. It's an interesting game. It's a, one of those games that you may not see in too many people's collections. And it's not a game you're going to just easily just come across and find. So, especially with the fact that it comes with the soundtrack, it's not just an empty case and just a game. I'd say it's well worth a pickup. So, thank you all for watching. Hit that like, subscribe button if you want to see more videos from me. And I'll see you guys in my next episode. Bye-bye!